Hello, this is the section on systemic lupus erythematosus, sometimes just called lupus or SLE. There are different forms of lupus. It's an autoimmune disease, and when we refer to the different types of lupus, we talk about one of them being discoid, which is limited to the skin, and is usually identified by a rash on the face, neck, and scalp. This is usually in 10% of the cases. We can also have a drug-induced lupus, which is um, after pre certain prescribed drugs, and those symptoms are similar to systemic lupus. 10% of cases can be classified as mixed connective tissue. These are symptoms and signs of more than one connective tissue disease, including lupus. In the majority of cases of lupus, 70% to be exact, are more severe, called systemic lupus. It's more severe than discoid and affects the skin, joints, and any organ or system of the body, including the lungs, kidneys, heart, or brain. It's usually idiopathic, meaning we don't really know what causes it. But we do see a primary defect in the regulation of the immune system, which is considered important in the pathogenesis um, or disorder. Other influences include um, sex steroid hormones, genetic predisposition, and other extraneous factors. When we look at the hormonal influences, it's considered to be a significant tr contributor to lupus. The disease really worsens during pregnancy. Many females between puberty and menopause suffer from systemic lupus, and postmenopausal therapy is associated with an increased risk for developing lupus as well. As you can see, this is more of a, a female disease. We do see a big genetic predisposition if you've had family members that have had this. I know my grandfather had it, which is strange because it's usually found in females. But it's um, genes linked to the HLA, DR, and DQ loci in class 2 immune response complex as a possible cause. So again, just genetic. Other factors, UV light and bacterial and viral infections can see induced signs and symptoms of lupus. Um, if you have drug-induced lupus, it's very similar to lupus. But the nice thing is here that once the um, drugs are taken away, it is reversible. The most commonly implicated is procainamide and anticonvulsants. So um, there's heart, uh, procainamide is kind of a heart um, drug and anticonvulsants obviously for epilepsy. With the epidemiology, it's two to three times more prevalent in people of color, especially African-American females especially African-American females during the reproductive years. And the two most frequent causes of death are renal failure and infectious complications. Here are some of the signs and symptoms. We see acute and chronic inflammation, a photosensitive facial rash. You can see that it looks very rashy. In the patients that I've seen that first present with this, it almost looks like a severe painful acne. Arthritis. I can see fever, weight loss, malaise, arthralgia, which is painful joints. There's that butterfly um, rash over the bridge of the nose. And if they're out in the sun, it makes it worse. I think the last, um, actually I saw a young male that had this, and he was working on a farm during the summer on break from college, and he ended up having lupus, and um, his face was just, it just looked like it was so painful. But the really neat thing was once they treated him, he came back, um, oh, like six months later, his face was completely clear and um, it looked like his treatment was working very well. We also see lymphadenopathy. Um, we can see some you know, inflamed lymph nodes. Other things, serositis, which is an inflammation of the membrane that um, lines the enclosed body ca cavities. And inflammation of the myocardium produces tachycardia, so the, the sac around your heart as well. We do have some immunologic manifestations. It can produce multiple autoantibodies. We see alteration in T-cell and B-cell function, and we see circulating immune complexes as well. Those immune complexes can cause a lot of that um, renal um, and lung damage that I talked about. We can also have antibodies to nuclear components, cell surface and cytoplasm antigens of RBCs, platelets, lymphs, and neutrophils, and antibodies to IgG. The principal type of antibody produced by SLE is the anti-nuclear antigen, or the anti-nuclear antibody. Groups of antibodies produced against a variety of antigens in the cell nucleus, so it just attacks that. And we can, I'll show you pictures of what it looks like in a minute. 
We can, it can be found in diseases other than lupus as well, which we'll talk about in future chapters. And the absence of an ANA excludes the diagnosis of lupus. One of the most specific markers is the Smith antibody. So my name is Becky Smith, so if you want to associate me with lupus, go ahead. Um, it's a nuclear acidic protein, which is a big marker. It's almost exclusively in patients with SLE. Another diagnostic evaluation that we see is they have a, pro a prolonged th um, protime. They have thrombocytopenia and lymphocytopenia. We used to do what was called an SLE test or the LE test. The LE test is um, a normal segmented neutrophil or other phagocytic cell with the engulfed swollen nucleus or neutrophil. As you can see down here, there's a very swollen nucleus there. It forms when the nuclei coated by antibodies are phagocytes by neutrophils. Okay, so those are something that um, we used to be able to see, but we don't do it anymore. We see high levels of anti-DNA antibodies, reduced complement levels. We see the breakdown products of C3, elevations of IgM and IgG with the autoimmune, those are the autoimmune antibodies that we're seeing, and a deficiency overall of IgA. Testing for ANA, for ANA is a screening test for lupus. If it's positive, we need to go and figure out if it is lupus or if it's one of the other diseases. If it's negative, the doctor would obviously think in a different direction. So it's just a screening test to see if there is an autoimmune disorder going on. The ANAs react with the whole nucleus or nuclear components like proteins, DNA, or histone. There are reaction patterns that occur, and I'll show you pictures here in a minute. The diffused or homogeneous pattern characterize anti-DNA or antibodies to histone. We see this in rheumatoid arthritis, and we can see it in lupus as well. And then we have a peripheral pattern. Like I said, guys, I got pictures of all these. Hold tight. Peripheral pattern kind of just shows it around the periphery, periphery of the nucleus. With this, it is usually associated with um, Sjogren's disease or lupus. Sjogren's disease, um, there's kind of like a drooped face. Um, speckled pattern. As just like it sounds, it's all speckled. With this one, it's very suggested, suggestive of lupus, and we will um, do the anti-Smith as well. It can also be for Sjogren's. So this one's lupus or Sjogren's. A nuclear pattern. This one is present in 50% of patients with scleroderma, Sjogren's, or lupus. So we'd have to go do more, some more specific testing if we saw a nuclear pattern. An anti-centromere antibody is found um, mostly in patients with scleroderma. And if they have scleroderma, they, we see the crest syndromes. Somebody with scleroderma is going to have a hardening of the skin and some of the organs. Crest refers to a calcinosis, which is like a, a hardening of the skin. Raynaud's phenomenon, which is very, um, your hands get very cold and difficult to use when it's cold out. Esophageal motility abnormality, difficulty swallowing is what that means. Sclerodactyl, their hands um, tighten up. And uh, telangiectasia, which is a kind of a skin issue as well. So here are some of the patterns that we see. The speckled one, suggestive of Sjogren's. You can see the nucleus is very speckled. Now when you look at these, this is actually the outside of the cell out here. Just the, the dark, the green, the bright candy apple green is the nucleus. Here we've got homogenous, very smooth, okay? Highly suggestive of lupus and rheumatoid arthritis. Here we've got the peripheral, you can see it's very bright on the outside. This would be highly suggestive of lupus and Sjogren's. And here we've got nuclear, okay, just the nucleoli is the only thing that glows. And this is present in 50% of patients with scleroderma, Sjogren's syndrome, and lupus. So this is seen in quite a few. Then the anti-centromere, I think this one in the middle here is what I like the best. You can see the two centromeres lined up. You should have learned about this um, in biology and what a centromere is. And the antibody is highly su suggestive of scleroderma if we see the anti-centromere pattern. And that concludes our section on um, lupus.